that is what makes summer bass fishing so fun. Today, we are talking about where these bass go in the middle of summer and how to catch them. The baits, the locations, so that you can stick nice fish all summer long. Now for the past six months or so, we have been walking you guys through the seasons. We started with winter, going into the pre-spawn, going into the spawn, into the post-spawn, leading to summer, following how these fish are traveling, how they're moving back, feeding on secondaries, going to spawning areas, and then dividing. Some of them staying shallow, some of them working their way back out the secondaries, headed to offshore or outside haunts. This all culminated a couple of days ago when we did that video for you guys explaining that full moon in June, that these truly monster fish are gonna take one more really aggressive, really hard shot. And I do wanna add that of the people that watched that video, tons of you caught new personal bests. I don't know how many of you, but the biggest one that I know about was a 13. Congratulations, Nate. One of the guys that watched this video went out to the lake, followed that advice, understood the concepts, and caught a 13 pounder. There were other fish over 10 as well. We were not messing around. The full moon in June is a magical time to catch a monster bass. Now, what do we do once that moon passes? That's where we're headed. Let's talk about summer. There are some advantages to summer, there are some disadvantages, but we're gonna talk about what to do and some baits to make it really simple for you. Let's start off with the specifics of what the fish are doing. We've talked about how the fish are splitting. There are now two groups as we went into summer and it becomes even more divided and very specific with those two groups all through the summer. Now the advantages are that, are that these fish become incredibly predictable and consistent. If you can find one of the patterns, it will typically last all the way into fall. Weather may only knock those fish down for a day or two. If you get really cold weather or crazy hot weather, it doesn't affect them for very long. These fish are gonna stay on these patterns for months. And that's why you want to establish summer patterns. A lot of people give up when it gets really hot. You don't want to do that. You can catch incredible numbers of fish in the summer, and you can still catch monsters. A couple of days ago, what we told you was that that full moon in June was the last time that you could specifically target a giant with a swim bait. And I meant that, but I didn't mean it was the last time that you could catch one. The difference is now you're going to have to fish through the schools of fish to get those big bites. You're no longer specifically targeting them. I'm not even telling you to stop throwing a swim bait. Throwing that big wake bait in particular can be fantastic all summer long. The difference is when you get your bites now, most of them will be smaller fish. You will still catch the occasional monster, but it won't be a deal where you go out there and every single time you get a bite, it's a giant. You'll go out throwing a great big wake bait and you'll get bit and it will be a two pounder. And the next one will be a four pounder. The next one will be a one pounder, but then you'll get your giant bite. So don't be afraid to keep going. Just understand that the fish have mixed in together now and are going to stay that way all the way till fall. So we're dividing the schools into two groups, the fish that went shallow or into cover and the fish that went offshore or to outside structures. Let's talk about the baits for fish that are now inside in the cover in the structure. What do you wanna look for? It depends on the body of water. Now, as you guys know, we have been traveling all over the country. We did that for a lot of reasons. One, we wanted to come and meet a lot of you guys and we were able to do that. Uh, we wanted to see more fisheries, wanted to see more fishing styles, basically double check our method as we went around the country and make sure that there was nothing significant that we were missing, or if there was, that we could learn that and just add it to the arsenal and keep the body of knowledge growing. So as we went around the country, what I found is that that split is unbelievably consistent. The only thing that's going to vary is the sort of cover that those fish get on. So your fish that stayed shallow after the spawn, they are cover oriented. 
They're going to be up there eating bluegills, crawdads, small bait fish, the bass after they hatch and start to grow, other fish that hatch and start to grow. They're gonna be up there feeding for the rest of the summer. Now, typically what those fish will do is get right on cover. They are ambush feeders. They wanna sit right up against something to do their feeding up there in that shallow water. So if you're in a grassy fishery, the thickest grass is where you wanna be. Now, how do you find the biggest fish? Because take a, a lake like Clear Lake, literally hundreds of miles of grass, hundreds of miles of grass. What do you do? If you wanna break it down and give yourself your best odds, you want to find that perfect cover. You could find perfect cover in a hundred spots, but you can only find that perfect cover with access to deeper water in a handful of spots. And if you wanna play the odds, those are where the better fish are going to pull up and they're gonna spend their summer, where they can still bail off to deep water. Now, deep water is relative. If you're in a pond, the deep water access might be going to four or five feet. If you're in a reservoir, it might be access to 40 or 50 feet. In a large lake that's a shallow bowl, it might be seven or eight feet. It doesn't have to be a huge difference. But if the fish's option is to go into the back of a bay where it's four feet and then three feet and then two feet and it's taking hundreds of yards to get there, or they can sit on a spot where it's right up shallow with good cover and then it just shears off to five or six or seven or eight feet, that's where the better ones will be most of the time. So be strategic as you do this. Now, those fish, I said they'll be around cover. As it gets even hotter, they're going to specifically be around shade. So if you're in a grass lake, the bite is typically better once the sun gets up and the shade becomes defined, meaning that the grass becomes the only place that has shade. The fish will pull into it. In the mornings, they'll get out and roam. Once that sun's up high, they'll draw right into that grass. They become predictable. They're easier to fish for. If you're in a dock lake, where the only shallow cover that those fish have is to get up underneath the pilings or underneath the overhanging cover. It just depends on the lake that you're on, but same plan. Those fish, as they move out in the morning, they're going to go out, they're going to feed because they have low light. They can go anywhere they want. But once that sun starts to get up, that water starts to get hot, they're gonna pull to the shadows. They're gonna get underneath the docks. They're gonna get under overhanging wood. They're going to get up in those pockets. What's so nice about that is that a lake that is hundreds or thousands of acres becomes very, very small when you know that all the fish are sitting in the shadows. And then it gets even easier if you know that the big fish are sitting in the shadows near the deep water. You guys following me? It's really not that complicated. You can do this. Now, as far as how to target those fish, four baits that I've got a lot of confidence in. Now you can throw anything. Let's be clear, summertime, you can catch them on almost anything. You don't need a single new bait. That said, we are talking about trying to draw the attention of those bigger fish. That's what Tim and I are here for. We're not here to just help you guys catch a fish once in a while. We want to help you fish your very best. Some, some baits that I have confidence in drawing those bigger fish out of a group of fish, number one is going to be a frog. I spend a ton of time with the frog in the summertime. Tim and I both do. You guys know that. That's not a secret. We put out frog video after frog video after frog video every summer. The frog allows you to get over the top of the grass, back underneath the trees, under docks, over the top of cover. You can go anywhere with it. You can draw those fish up works extremely well early and late low light conditions like this they'll get up and hunt those edges aggressively but it also works in the heat of the day when the fish get underneath the cover now the next one sticking to cover is going to be a heavy flipping setup a punching rig an ounce or an ounce and a half or even two ounces of weight depending on how heavy your cover is and then a creature bait you can put that on a flipping hook if you want. I prefer a four-aught super line hook, a standard wide gap hook is how I prefer to catch them. 
Everyone has their own preference, but I'll link you all the gear in the video description, just like every video. You know we're very specific about our equipment, but a heavy punching rig, so the same fish that you would frog over the top of, if they don't want to come up, you go in and you punch for them. Wait until the heat of the day and focus on the thickest or darkest cover. So if there's a lot of grass, aim for the thickest spot in that grass because under that will be the darkest shadow. If you're going to fish a dock, aim for the darkest piling in the shadows of the dock, the one that's the farthest back in the shadow. If you're trying to get in and around a tree, pitch back in that tree. That's the beauty of a weedless setup like that. Aim for the darkest shadow. Those big fish don't mess around. They take the very best spots. Next one is going to be a swim jig. You guys know we like to power fish. The swim jig, two approaches to the swim jig. One is to go lighter wire, or I'm sorry, lighter weight, and fish it a lot like a spinnerbait. Just buzz it around the edges of cover. That works extremely well. The other way is to go heavier, three quarter ounce, heavier swim jig, larger profile swim jig, and I use this to bust through the grass. So if other people are fishing the grass mat and they're fishing through the lanes with a soft jerk bait or a little crank bait or they're throwing buzz baits through the lanes in the grass, I come through with a heavy swim jig on straight braided line and I aim right for the thickest parts of the grass and I just rip that thing through the grass almost like the way you would fish a lipless crankbait in early spring ripping it through grass. We'll do that with the swim jig and it draws these just voracious strikes because everyone else is fishing around the cover and we're plowing right through the center of it. Don't be afraid of that swim jig. Now of course we want you guys to adapt these techniques to your water. So if you're on a crystal clear fishery where the fish are smaller, take this information, downsize it. Throw a lighter Texas rig. Instead of throwing a swim jig, go to a straight Kitek. Instead of throwing a frog, go to a popper. If you guys are on a smallmouth fishery, these concepts work if you downsize them. Just don't throw the frog, throw the popper. The exact same concept works. Your fish, as they're moving up, they're going to be in the same places, coast to coast. They're in the same places. You just have to adapt the technique a tiny little bit for each lake. You can be successful anywhere you go. Now last, not as glamorous as the others, is a Senko. Again, really clear water fishery, focus on the five inch. Murkier water, bigger fish, start with a seven inch, come back to a six inch if you have to. But most places, the seven inch Senko is an incredible bait and a lot of people overlook it. But the six inch is a great way to get numbers of bites and the really big bites. Only go to the five if you feel like your lake is too finesse driven for them to eat that bigger bait. So four baits for that shallow water approach. Now let's talk about that offshore or outside approach. What are those fish doing? So half your fish went shallow. The other half after they spawned started the migration back out. They followed the secondary points back out to open water. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that they went deep. It just means that they went to outside structures. So they may still move right up shallow, two, three, five, ten 10 feet of water, but they can also go down deep, show up in 20 and 30 and 40 feet of water. These fish are very, very easy to target. These fish are rock oriented everywhere that I go. Those summer fish that move offshore, they love rock. If it's an option, if there's rock in your lake, that's where they're going to be. The other place that they're going to be, if it is at all an option, is current. Those offshore fish, they're out there to feed too. They are going to be eating bait fish, big bait fish. The ones in the shallows, they're gonna eat whatever they can get. The ones that are offshore, they're targeting those full size bait fish that have also come back out. It's not the little tiny ones that are growing up in the shallows. It's the ones that went up and spawned and peeled back off. They're out there chasing them around. So those fish, if they're in current, become unbelievably predictable. That's why all the ledge fishing lakes are so good in the summertime, all through the south. 
we just fished a ton of those lakes day after day after day after day trying new lakes experimenting with more of those ledge options playing with different baits it's amazing as you go coast to coast how consistent these fish really are so the offshore fish if you've got current this is easy the fish are going to pull to the fastest current that has good rock structure and the fish are not afraid of that current Oftentimes, they'll sit right out on the front of a piece of cover. Now, the reason why, you would think if there was a little hump with current coming over it, that the fish would want to sit behind it. Typically, that's not the case. They can sit right on top or right on the face because as that current comes along, it'll hump up and over. There's actually a little pocket in there right down along the bottom where the current's not moving as quickly. Those fish are protected in there and that food will come right over them and they can rush up and take it. So they're gonna be right out on the face of those structures. They're really easy to find with your electronics and they're going to bunch up. They're gonna be in huge schools. And that's one of those opportunities where you can fish through the school back and forth until you get the big ones going. Now, if you don't have the current, they'll still stick to that rock. They'll be on outside structures. They'll be out on main lake points, but it won't necessarily be way out deep. Sometimes they'll pull up shallow. They'll be up three, five, seven feet of water, but still on the ends of the main lake points. Then if you get weird changes in the weather, instead of just disappearing altogether, they typically, if you've got a main lake point sticking out into the lake, those fish are up here feeding. You would think if they got weird weather that they'd just bail off and vanish. And when you don't catch them, that's what you think they did. But a lot of times what they'll do is just move horizontally and they'll just come out and suspend. And they could be over 20 or 40 or 100 feet of water. They'll just sit out here until conditions are right and then they'll come back in and they'll feed again. So four baits for targeting those fish that went to the outside structures, shallow or deep. Number one is going to be a square bill. Again, the fact that they went outside doesn't necessarily mean that they went deep. What I like to throw in a square bill, it doesn't matter if it's rattling or silent. Well, it matters, but it will vary day to day. I carry both. And again, down in the video description, we're gonna link you each one of these baits or even give you an option. So with this, I'll give you my favorite rattling and non-rattling option. With a square bill, I like a lot of flash because these summertime fish, that warm water, their metabolism is high, they're aggressive. Typically, if they can see it, they're going to take a shot at it, especially if there's current. So bright, bold, flashy colors are where it's at. It's not like the springtime where you wanna finesse them. Number two is gonna be the deep crank. 6XD is a go-to. The 10XD is another one. And then there are three or four others. We just did a deep cranking video for you. We just did videos about a lot of these things for you, but this is tying it all together. And again, I wanna focus on the fact that this is going to last for months. And we're going to do more videos on these topics, very specific videos. Today is that overview so that you know what you're looking for as you go out there this summer. It doesn't matter if it's 80 degrees or 110 degrees, these fish still need to eat and you can get out there and catch a ton of them. So the deep crank, again, bold colors. The value of the deep crank is you can cover an incredible amount of water. You can catch a lot of fish. And if you're in the chain, like, so say you're on the Tennessee River, that whole chain of lakes, and you're out there fishing the ledges, the deep crank will give you a very quick answer if what you're looking at is largemouth or smallmouth or white bass or catfish. You can figure it out really quickly and keep moving until you find a school of fish that is the right species and the size that you're looking for. The deep crank will do it quickly. Once you've found your fish, or if your fish will not react to the crank, you're going to slow down. One is going to be the shaky headworm, which is so deadly, so, so deadly. It's a basic shaky head, like a 3 sixteenths or quarter ounce shaky head, unless you're in heavy current, then you need to go heavier. And a standard six to seven inch worm. I love the T-Mac worm. That's a worm I throw a lot. The trick worm is another great option. Tim just did an underwater video comparing all these different worms. 
but the worm again in a bold color. Black blue, black red, June bug, blueberry. Those are your colors that are going to get that strong reaction during the summertime. And then if you want to upsize your catch, you can do one of two things. You can either go to a bigger worm, so go to a magnum size worm, or go to a jig. Standard jig, half to three quarter ounce jig. I love throwing a beaver trailer in the summertime, but if you wanna get aggressive with your jig, go to something like a rage bug where you've got some kick, or the new spicy beaver where it's got some kick and some motion. That's going to complete that package. So the two ways you're gonna fish that jig. With a beaver, I'm typically just slow pulling on bottom or giving it a little double hop. But you can also stroke a jig where you rip, reel up that slack while it falls. Rip and that thing will dart up and then fall back to bottom. Dart up and fall back to bottom. If you're doing that, something with that kick is going to help a lot. Now head style for the jig, that's pretty simple. If you've got a ton of grass, you need a flipping head. If you've got a little bit of everything, a pitching jig is your best bet, and that's the primary jig I use. If it's just open bottom, you've got a lot of rock, but it's not nasty rock, it's a lot of hard pan rock, go to a football jig. It's that simple. You know your water, or if you don't know your water, get out there and spend a day or two. If you're catching a bunch of grass, a football jig is not for you. If you're not catching grass, you're either looking at a football or a pitching jig. If you're getting a little bit of everything, absolutely you're throwing a pitch and jig. Half ounce, five eighths, three quarter. Keep it simple, stay natural, throw a lot of the green pumpkins with a green pumpkin or green pumpkin red trailer, and it works so well. Again, you can catch them on almost anything, but the key to these baits is that if I come across a two pounder, I'm gonna catch him. If I come across a six pounder or an eight pounder or a 12 pounder, I'm gonna catch him. I'm not gonna leave him behind. If I'm throwing a little tiny drop shot, I'm gonna be catching a bunch of fish, but what if I come across the nose of a monster? She may or may not eat it. It may not be worth it to her. But if I come across her with a big deep crank or a frog or a great big swim jig, my odds of that fish just letting loose and eating that bait skyrocket. You're putting in the effort. You're out there in the hot baking sun. You're getting run over by skiers and wakeboarders and jet skis. You're putting in the effort. Why not be a little bit more precise, specifically choose baits to get bigger bites so that when you do cross paths with the right fish, you get them in the boat. Summertime is an awesome time. You can catch huge numbers of fish, oftentimes even better than you can catch in the spring, and you can still get those monster bites. Don't be afraid to keep fishing all summer long, even in the heat. Wear your sun gear, drink a ton of fluids, and you will be all right. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, you need to do that. We do three videos a week for you, and I guarantee you're missing some of them if you're not subscribed. So hit that subscribe button. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. Thank you.